Hello, everybody, and welcome to the chapter training refresher video that is meant for chapter officials and CHRs who maintain the water points and provide information about the program to community members. Today, we're going to cover the goal of the program and why it's so important that people have access to safe drinking water. We're also going to go over the chapter water allowances and how those were calculated. And then we're going to cover the blue five gallon storage containers and the chlorine disinfection tablets that were provided to some of the chapters. We're also going to cover chapter responsibilities and provide additional resources. The Navajo Nation has an estimated 37,000 people without water, or about 20% of the population. Our goal is to increase access to safe drinking water for residents of homes with no piped water during the COVID-19 public health emergency. This includes free water, water storage containers, and disinfection tablets, if needed, to keep the water safe for human consumption in the home. Obtaining drinking water from sources supplied by a public water system that is regulated by the Navajo EPA helps ensure that the water is safe for you and your family. We have also worked to provide the chapters with educational materials and trainings, just like this one, about safe water. As part of the project, IHS is paying the water fees for people who live in homes without piped water. To help increase access to drinking water, over 50 new water points, called Transitional Water Points, or TWPs, have been installed as part of this project. At TWPs, IHS is paying the water bill in full every month until the maximum two-year water allowance is reached or until the COVID-19 public health emergency is declared over, whichever is sooner. If you aren't sure about your chapter's water allowance, you can refer to your Beneficial Use Agreement, or BUA, which I'll talk about more in a second. IHS will stop paying the water fees once the public health emergency is over or when you reach your maximum water allowance. After that, it's up to the chapter if they want to continue to operate the TWP at their own cost or close it. For a PWP, it's a little bit different. IHS is going to pay the monthly allowance that's shown on the BUA, and it's going to show up as a credit on your account each month for two years or until the public health emergency is over, whichever is sooner. Here's a copy of one of the beneficial use agreements for the water collection project, one of the BUAs. The chapter should have been provided a copy of each BUA for their reference. So here on the top line on the right, you can see that's where your monthly water allowance is going to be. Right below that is the two year. So you can refer to this and see how much water IHS is going to pay for monthly and then also the maximum. This was calculated based on the number of homes without piped water in your community. So each chapter is going to be different. Chapters with more homes are going to have a higher water allowance. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the items that were provided at each water point. That includes the hand sanitizer and the stand, a hose if you are at a TWP, and some chains and locks for security. Several signs were also installed, which you can see in this photo. The first sign talks about COVID-19 precautions and things that people should do to keep safe while they're filling their water containers. There is also a sign letting people know they can obtain their five gallon storage container at the chapter. And at some chapters, there is also a sign telling people they can ask for a disinfection tablet to be added to their container. It's also important to make sure everyone is following all the COVID-19 precautions while they're collecting their water or filling their water storage containers. This includes practicing safe physical distancing by keeping six feet away, wearing masks, and using the hand sanitizer provided. The signs that were installed will have this information on them as well. A majority of chapters will have received those blue five gallon storage containers. If you're not sure how many you received, you can refer to your BUA. In that top box on the right, it lists the IHS number of homes without piped water. We use this number to calculate the number of storage containers that we provided to you. That number can be found in the second box. This should match the number of storage containers that you received. And remember, it's one container per person. So if a home has five people, you can provide them five storage containers. When you hand out the storage containers to your community members, you want to go over a few things about proper storage. So first, you want to tell them to store the container off the ground, away from dirt and dust, and make sure that pets can't contaminate the water somehow. You also want to tell them that they should only be using it for water. Don't fill it with other types of liquids or use it for agricultural purposes or anything else. It should only be used for drinking water and cooking water. Finally, you want to have them clean and sanitize it before they return to the water point to refill it, and we'll go over that next. 
Here's a demonstration of how to sanitize the blue storage container. First, you want to measure four teaspoons of bleach with one gallon of water. Pour that into your storage container. We've already added some water into our storage container, so you can see here she's just adding the four teaspoons of bleach. Make sure that people are using regular unscented bleach. Any scented bleaches will not properly clean and sanitize the container. Next, put the spigot back on and shake the container around, making sure that all of the inside parts get wet from the bleach solution. Then let it sit for 30 seconds. Once the 30 seconds is up, you can dump the water out into the sink and let the container air dry. And that's it, you have just sanitized your container. You want to encourage people to clean and sanitize their container before coming to refill it at the water point. Here's a handout that you can provide along with the blue storage containers to your community members. And it covers the importance of getting your drinking and cooking water from a regulated source that's tested and that we know is safe to drink. This handout also refers to the NavajoSafeWater.org website, which has a ton of good resources. On the back, there are sanitizing and cleaning instructions on how to use the bleach solution to clean the storage container. You can find this handout on the NavajoSafeWater.org website. In addition to the blue storage containers, some chapters were also provided the chlorine disinfection tablets based on the chlorine test results from that water point. You can see some of the tablets in this photo. Chlorine kills the bacteria and viruses in water that could make you sick. If the chapter had a lower chlorine level, we recommend adding the chlorine tablets to the blue storage containers. The purpose of the tablet is to extend the time that chlorine is in the water and will prevent the growth of bacteria and viruses while it's being stored at that person's home. If you aren't sure if your chapter needed the disinfection tablets, you can go back to the BUA here, and right here is where it will tell you if disinfection tablets were required based on our chlorine tests that we conducted. It'll also tell you what your one year supply was and the number of tablets that we provided. When a person comes to refill their blue five gallon storage containers, someone from the chapter can add one chlorine tablet to the container. After that, tell the person to wait 30 minutes for the tablet to dissolve, and then they can use it for cooking and drinking. Anytime a person to comes to refill their blue five gallon storage container, you can add a chlorine tablet. You only want to add the chlorine tablets to the blue five gallon storage containers. Any other containers might be different sizes or made of different materials that we didn't test, so the chlorine might not work the way it's supposed to. The blue containers were tested, and we know that the chlorine level is safe. Don't hand out any extra tablets. Keep them stored safely at the chapter house. Here's a handout that provides some information about the water disinfection tablets, including the purpose and how to use them. First, you want to fill the blue five gallon container with water. Second, the chapter official or someone from the chapter will place one of the tablets into the container. Tell the person they should wait 30 minutes before using the water to make sure the tablet completely dissolves. After that, they can use it for drinking, cooking, and hand washing. Once the water has been in the container for about a week, they should dump anything that's left, sanitize and clean the container, and then bring it back to be refilled. The back of the handout also goes through some frequently asked questions about chlorine, like what are the health benefits of adding chlorine to the water? If someone asks this question, you can refer them to to this handout and let them know that chlorine has been proven to reduce bacteria and viruses that can make you sick. That's why we're adding the chlorine tablet to keep your family healthy and prevent diseases. I won't go over the rest of the questions during this video, but if you'd like more information, please refer to the more detailed disinfection tablet video on the website. One more thing, if someone really does not want a chlorine tablet, you don't have to give it to them. It's not required, but it is highly recommended. So you can encourage them to take a tablet but if they are against it, you don't have to force it. And again, don't hand out any extra tablets, only put them directly into the container when people are coming to refill them. Another important piece I want to cover are the reporting logs. So when you distribute the five gallon containers to your community members, we ask that you record their names, their address, or a rough description of the location of their home, how many containers you gave them, how many chlorine tablets you gave them, and the date. You don't have to return this form to us. This is more for your records, so you know which homes receive the five gallon containers and the homes that don't have piped water. You could also provide this information to your local IHS engineers to help fund future projects to get piped water to these. One log that we do ask you return to us is the monthly reporting form. So each month you should fill out this log 
with the number of containers provided that month, the number of disinfection tablets provided that month, the number of broken or defective containers and defective spigots that need to be replaced under the warranty. And this form should be submitted every month, and we're asking that you do it by the fifth of the month so we can start compiling all the data from the different chapters. You can submit it to this email address right there, which is ihsnavajosafewater at ihs.gov. You can also use the Navajo Safe Water website to report your monthly activities for the chapter. So in order to do this, you just go to navajosafewater.org and that will bring up this website. So once it loads, you can scroll down a little bit, you'll see all of these tabs. So go ahead and click the additional resources tab, which is the last option. Then you have to scroll up just a little bit in order to see this. And it says for chapter use only, report monthly distribution activities. And you can click on this hyperlink. That's gonna bring you to the survey and click open in browser. And then the questions will pop up. So at the top here, you'll see uh, the purpose and it's just to submit your monthly safe water collection and storage distribution activities for the storage containers and the disinfection tablets. And we're asking that you submit it by the fifth of the month. Um, and that way we can start looking at all the data from the different chapters. If you have any problems with the website, you can go to IHS, you can email IHS Navajo Safe Water at IHS.gov. So let's start filling out the form. So just click this arrow right here and that will bring a drop down that goes through just the basic information like the submittal date. So let's say it's January and I'm reporting for my December activities. So it's Monday, January 4th. The time is seven o'clock. And I am reporting for the month of December. So I'll go ahead and click that in 2020. Uh, then it, you can just type in your name here, the name of the person submitting, the contact info, the contact phone number, and email address. So you just go ahead and fill in that information. Scroll down a little more, and this is where you select your chapter. So I'm going to say I'm through, since they helped me make some of this video. On the T, that will bring up all of the chapters that begin with the letter T. Here I'm selecting through. And once I continue to scroll down, it does say that there is a TWP, a new transitional water point, and that is correct. So oh, onto the reporting part, go ahead and click that drop down. And it says here, if you have not distributed anything, you can just enter a zero. So the number of water containers distributed during December, let's say they submitted 10 or distributed 10. Water disinfection tablets, let's say they distributed 15. The number of water containers returned for warranty, let's say we had two defective containers and the number of spigots returned, let's say we had three detective, defective spigots. And then here is a place where we can upload pictures of any of the broken containers or broken spigots uh, for the warranty. So you can uh, upload them here either by taking a photo or uploading it from your computer. And then the last part is just any general comments that you have here in this top box or any issues or concerns, you can type them. After that, you can just click the submit button and that will submit your monthly log. And that's it. I've mentioned the Navajo Safe Water website throughout this video, and it's a great resource if you're looking for more information. It has videos from President Nez, Navajo translations, and an interactive map of all the water points. You can look up your chapter and see the operating hours of the water point and also some pictures of the site. If you notice the hours or information is wrong on the website, you can submit changes there too. In the additional resources tab, there are handouts I talked about and the more detailed training videos. They provide additional information on the blue storage containers and what information to pass along to your community members. They also cover the disinfection tablets, the reporting requirements, and the beneficial use agreements. If you have any questions or concerns, you can email IHS Navajo Safe Water at IHS.gov. You can also contact your local IHS Office of Environmental Health and Engineering, whose contact information is on the screen. We hope this video helped review some important parts of the project. Thank you.